Rogue Sun, issue number 15 by Image Comics. So yeah, in the last issue, Dylan gets sent to this world where basically all the souls of the previous Rogue Sons get sent to. And he meets his father, and he gets attacked by other Rogue Sons. And eventually he meets his grandfather, and that's how the cliffhanger ends. Uh, meanwhile, Caleb has gone full-blown evil, and he goes to meet up with a bunch of... Uh, he goes to meet up with... Uh, the Morning Star, as well as like his army, and that's how this starts. It starts with Caleb meeting with Morning Star and an army of werewolves, and um, they have a brief fight. During this fight, Caleb is just pretty much talking about how uh, you know you keep sending armies after the Rogue Sun, and they keep getting slaughtered. And every once in a while, one of them gets lucky, and the Rogue Sun dies. But then a new one is called, and the cycle just keeps on continuing. And I'm tired of all this. So why don't we, we end this? Why don't you give me control over the army? I will basically take over the world, wiping out all of humanity. And then I will give you control of the army back. Like you can sit on the throne of this new world where there won't be any more fighting anymore because one side has prevailed. So Caleb wants to end this conflict by wiping out all of humanity and only having the demons survive. Um, yeah, it's... Here's the thing. I don't mind Caleb descending into evil, like becoming this. I just would have wished if they had done more with it. Like if they had stretched it out a bit. I feel like his heel turn is way too fast. One minute he's a good guy. The next minute he's full-blown evil. And there was really no catalyst for it. So I would have stretched this out for multiple issues. Have him slowly descend into uh, to madness. I think I, I did a pitch, or at least I talked about it, where I, what I would have done instead was uh, I would have Caleb, he's taken over, and he's using his old ways, because Caleb is, like, he was a rogue son, like, I think it was like a thousand years ago or so. It's been forever since he was the rogue son. And so society has changed, the world has changed, demons have changed, everyone has changed since then. So I would have had Caleb, like, he's still using his old ways, and maybe he wins here and there. But then over time, he starts realizing that he was wrong, that uh, my old ways aren't working. So I, I got to change things up. I got to find some new ways. I got to uh, adapt, basically, to this new society. And as he's adapting, he's starting to realize that the, uh, I mean, he grew up in a time where people were basically fighting for their lives. And so maybe he starts going a little bit more anti-hero. Just slowly at first, but then starts building up more and more. And he starts becoming more and more aggressive as he starts killing off all of his foes. He starts being less of a hero, more of a vigilante, until he finally just starts going off the deep end. I would have had like a slow burn in that direction. Instead, it's just Caleb takes over. He does like good deeds for one issue. And then the very next issue, he's like, all right, time to be evil. Actually, it wasn't even the very next issue. It was that same issue at the end. Like half of the issue is him doing good deeds. And at the end, he's like, all right, time to be evil. Like this isn't working. <laughs> So that was kind of stupid. Uh, meanwhile, we have Dylan and he's at this cabin, or at least it's a mental construct of a cabin that Marcus, Dylan's father, and Marcus's father, uh, Dylan's grandpa, used to go to. Uh, basically, Marcus says, uh, Mom wanted snow for Christmas and Dad liked to kill things. So we went to this cabin and it's like covered with uh, trophy heads and stuff. And uh Dylan's grandfather starts off like pretty awesome. He's basically just kind of, he, he's telling uh, Dylan that, you know, he, you were actually doing a good job as a rogue son. Like I, I watched you. Caleb wasn't the only one who watched. Marcus was the only one who, who watched. Like we were like every rogue son is able to watch you, I guess. So I, I watched you as you were on this journey of becoming the rogue son. And uh, you were way better than your old man was at this point. Like, uh, Marcus was just god-awful. He once, like, on the second time out, he flew into a parked car and knocked himself out. Uh, so you, you've been doing a lot more. Your problem is that you have bad leadership. Like, first it was Marcus, then it was Caleb. Like, you got to find someone else better to kind of help guide you through this. And that's that's what your problem is. And, um, yeah, of course, Marcus gets pissed off, especially since the old man, uh, Grandpa Rogue's son, says that there's one way to get you back but the problem is that um 
to do that, there's going to be like a bunch of rogue suns that we got to fight our way through. But all of them are like the, the ones that are there are pretty weak. I think we can fight our way through it. Marcus is like, no, 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 that's too dangerous. You got to find some other way. And the grandpa's like, no, that's the only way that we have. You got to do this. Stop being a pussy. Let's go and help your son get his body back. And um, yeah, it, it basically it sets up this. Both Marcus and Grandpa obviously have their beef with each other, kind of like Dylan has his beef with his own dad. And they are both thinking, like, there's different ways we can help Dylan. Grandpa is making more sense, but it's more dangerous. Marcus is more of uh, trying to make it more easy, but it might take too long. And so it kind of puts Dylan in this spot where he has to choose. It's basically a war between his grandpa or his father. Who is he going to pick? And he picks his grandpa. Which, uh, yeah, I mean, the grandpa's making a lot more sense to me. Uh, meanwhile, we have Ari, who is talking to her mom. And Ari is trying to explain that Dylan is not Dylan. But she keeps getting interrupted. And basically, her mom is telling her that uh, I know like one of the reasons that you have a problem with Dylan is because uh, you weren't the rogue son. Like, you thought that your father picked Dylan over you. Uh, the thing is that he didn't. Your dad was actually considering giving you the rogue son powers. I made him promise not to give it to you because you're smart, you're beautiful, you have your whole life ahead of you. And I knew that being rogue son would eventually kill your father. And I know that it's eventually going to kill you. And I don't want that. I don't want to watch my own child be murdered That's eventually. I want you to have a long, happy, healthy life. And you're not going to have that being the rogue son. So I made him promise not to give it to you. And so instead he gave it to Dylan. And that's the reason why I'm helping D Dylan a lot. Is because I sentenced him to a life of being the rogue son. Because I loved you too much to force that onto you. So I was like, alright. Mom's making sense here. And uh, Ari tries to explain that... Um, it's not about that. I, I, I just, I don't think Dylan is Dylan. Like, he keeps referring to himself in the third person. He refers to this body. He's acting weird. Like, he's not acting like his usual self. The mom kind of brushes her off. And I was like, oh, come on. Like, the mom has been portrayed as a pretty smart character so far. The fact that she's not able to deduct that Dylan is not really Dylan, but actually Caleb in control of his body. Especially with all these, like, signs. At least someone is figuring it out. If everyone was just completely oblivious, that would have been really annoying because it's kind of obvious that it's not him. Yeah, this is just a trope that I hate. Uh, I see it a lot in like TV shows, comics, and stuff where you have like the episode where the uh, like a character has their body taken over or they're not who they claim to be. And it should be obvious. Like... All the friends and family members don't notice as there's this huge difference in the character. Maybe one of them knows that there's something off and they try to explain it, but no one believes them. It, it, it's a trope that I absolutely hate because it's been done to death. It's just very annoying. And it also just kind of, you have to dumb down all the other characters and make them more stupid than usual just so you can get this little story plot going because it doesn't work if the characters are smart enough to realize that hey this dude that we always hang out with all the time is acting completely different and this other character that we are very familiar with knows that or at least claims that this person is being possessed but i'm not going to believe them because that sounds dumb or that sounds far-fetched or uh maybe the character who's you know being claimed to be possessed is just going through changes that's how it is here it's like Ari, like Ari is your daughter. You love her to the point where you promise, you made your husband promise not to give her the powers because you didn't want to see her go down that lifestyle. You absolutely love her. You obviously you raised her. You should know how she is. You spent months with Dylan. I mean, I'm not saying that you should know Dylan in and out, but you already kind of know like what his personality is. The fact that he did a complete 180 should kind of trigger something. You should kind of be like, hmm, something about here seems kind of fishy. And then when your daughter comes up to you and says, hey, uh, I don't think Dylan is Dylan. I think he's someone else. He keeps referring to his body. He keeps referring to himself in the third person. He's acting completely different. I think he might be possessed. And you're just going to be like, nah, he's fine. I don't know. That just, I'm not buying that. 
like you would think the mom would listen to the daughter especially since like we live in a world where or at least in this world you live in a world where possessions and other supernatural like powers and stuff like that have happened before like you should be aware that hey your stepson could be possessed for all you know you have no idea he's acting weird he's not acting usual and your daughter is saying that he's off and thinking that he might be possessed maybe you should think about that too but nah uh but yeah uh we cut back to dylan and his father and grandpa and um they get attacked by previous rogue sons uh basically there's a a deal that's been made and the deal is that if we're able to capture dylan alive and bring his body to their boss then they will be able to uh enter the, the living world again they won't be stuck here in this like limbo and so everyone is now gunning for dylan but only Dylan. Like, Marcus doesn't need to be kept alive. Uh, Grandpa doesn't need to be kept alive. Even though they're dead, basically, it's kind of explained that, uh, like, yeah, we are dead, but our soul, or, like, what you would probably call a soul is still here. But if we die here, like, if our soul gets destroyed here, we basically merge with the rogue sun, like, kind of realm, and we just cease to exist. So it's kind of like a death beyond death. So they obviously don't want to die again. Um, so we just pretty much get like a civil war between the rogue sons. And um, thank, there, there was a part where I'm like, okay, how come everyone was able to activate their rogue son powers except for Grandpa, Marcus, and Dylan? That doesn't make any sense. Thankfully, it's explained here. That was like one thing that was going through my head as I was reading this. But they brought it up. They clarified that uh, it can take a while. It can take years to like manifest your, your suit and your powers and regain them. So that's good. So uh, yeah, we got a uh, civil war going on between the rogue sons. We have just a dispute between Dylan and Marcus and his grandpa and Dylan forced to pick sides. I think this is supposed to be like a way to eventually redeem Marcus towards the readers and towards Dylan. I don't know how that's gonna work. I don't know if it's gonna work with me. Uh, We'll see. And then of course, in the real world, we have Caleb taking control of Dylan's body and trying to use that to control an army and wipe out all of humanity. All in all, I would say this was actually a step in the right direction. I mean, anyone who's watching my previous Rogue Sun stuff, you'll know I have been very, very harsh on this series. And it's not like undeserved harshness. I, I, in my opinion, I formally believe that this series has been pretty terrible. It has a lot of potential, but it's not hitting uh, the mark. And so I've crapped on it. And I still stand by everything that I said previously about those previous issues. I do believe those previous issues that I said were crap are still crap. But there have been some issues here and there that have gone better. And this one is uh, another step in the right direction. I'm a little bit worried because uh, the last issue was a step in the in the wrong direction. And I've mentioned this before, that it seems like every time this series does one good issue and takes one step forward it, it by the next issue it takes like three steps back and so it just continues to like not really improve like we'll get a good issue here and there but we'll get so many terrible issues in between and uh, the, the good issues are pretty rare so i'm not getting my hopes up that this thing is going to be heading in the right direction or anything i will just say that this is an improvement this is a a decent issue and if we can just continue to just improve this series can hopefully one day live up to its potential because it sounds like a really awesome story that could be told. You got tokusatsu, which I freaking love. You got demons, which I freaking love. I love stories where our heroes are like fighting demons, like monster hunters and stuff like that. I love those kind of stories. So you have a tokusatsu fighting demons and you have this kid who's trying to develop his powers. He's not really like your cliche uh protagonist you know shonen hero superhero kind of character he has his faults uh you know he's kind of a bull well he's not kind of a bully he is a bully it's kind of just any whole character but hopefully he can like improve you know with great power comes great responsibility and he learns to better himself by becoming this hero and uh yeah like there's things here that could be cool but they've just been absolutely terrible in terms of their execution so i'm hoping that this series starts to get better 
like I said, this issue is a step in the right direction, but one issue and three duds does not make for a good series, especially since we're issue 15. I think there's only been like three issues that I've actually enjoyed. That's, that's pretty terrible. That's three good issues and 12 terrible issues. That's not a, it's not a good, uh, I was going to say KDR, but <laughs> video game mindset. Those are not good stats. So yeah, uh, kind of just ran away at this point. This was a step in the right direction. I like this issue. I have my faults with it. Mostly Caleb. I feel like the whole Caleb situation is uh, poorly done. I don't mind him falling into evil. I just think it happened too fast. I would have liked if they had taken their time with that. But yeah, step in the right direction. So there you go. There's Rogue Sun. Issue number 15. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. So what did you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed if you guys haven't already, please subscribe, hit that bell for a notification, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far, and I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.